Wasky Squirrel here. I, uh, I'm doing this video because you were supposed to see the great unveiling of Mystery Pen. Well, yesterday. <laughs> that was my plan for my Wednesday pen upload. That failed to happen. I uh, inked it up with Platinum Classic Lavender Black, which is really awesome ink. I thought awesome ink for an awesome pen. <laughs> which, so, so far, so good. Uh, until I started writing. And, oh my god, skippy, horrible, ugh. <laughs> so, bad first impression for that pen. So I canceled that review, and by then I was mad. Well, I, I will film that video. I just, uh, <laughs> I was no longer in the right frame of mind to film it, because I was mad. Uh, so I, ink, I cleaned that ink out of the pen. Um, I think it just goes to show that Great ink, great pen, not great together. So, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll have to wait a little bit longer to see what that mystery pen is, but uh, I love it. <laughs> so, I was excited to film that. So, what I thought I would do instead tonight, because uh, I suppose I could film that pen video, but then it would be really late by the time I got everything edited, and eh, and, I'm, and I've got my countdown coming. I've got my, uh, I'm going to actually do a pens in use this week. So, uh, cause I actually restored some pens that I want to show off. So, uh, I decided, you know what? We'll just save it for a week. So next week will be the great unveiling. And it's not going to be in this year's top 10 because, uh, I wrote down my top 10 before I had, uh, gotten around to reviewing it anyway. So, uh, the top 10 doesn't change. So I'm sitting on the floor right now. I decided to do something different. Uh, somebody mentioned this a year or so ago. You know, let, what, what's on your bookshelves? So I've been doing, uh, well, one book review so far. I have two more in the pipeline. Uh, we'll talk about them when they get, when I get around to making the review. I'm still writing my notes on the one and still finishing reading the other. So, uh, yeah. But, uh, so I thought I'd just give you a look at books that I have. You know, it's kind of like a view into somebody's soul. Now, I'm going to have to do some careful editing because I'm uh, my living room's a little messy. It's end of the semester, and, uh, you know, I'm usually fairly neat, but uh, this is that time of year when things just get ahead of me, and housekeeping got ahead of me. So if you see any dust, that would be why. And, uh, yeah, I just, this living room is not one of the rooms that I have cleaned yet. So... Without further ado, let's take a look at the books, because that's why I'm filming this. So this is actually a pretty awesome bookshelf. Uh, I have a lot of ink in this open container up here. Scary amount of ink. Um, it's actually an old chemistry kit. Uh, beside it, that's an old microscope box. I've never seen the microscope. Uh, let's see if I can do this one-handed. But uh, I keep thinking I can find a use for it, just so far I have not. But I will say, let's see if I have a pen available here. I'll take this Bauer 801. Definitely deep enough if I can work out some kind of a pull-out shelving system that I could turn this into pen storage. Which was kind of my thought when I saved it. So we'll see. Uh, that, by the way, whoops, I zoomed. Zoom out. That, by the way, is a lantern. I took up the Cartwright Tunnel and uh, Fairview Lift Bridge. Uh, now it sits in my living room as a light source if the power goes out. Uh, although I do have this, which is solar powered. I set that solar panel out on the steps every day. Let's see if we can get it to light. Oh, what well, doesn't want to. Cover it with my hand. Anyway, it just kind of slowly changes color. There's a neat LED in it. You know, for ten dollars, what the heck. Uh, more ink. I have a problem. This is the offender. Why you didn't get the great unveiling last night. It is a good ink, I just not with that pen. Uh, so, uh, my interests are kind of eclectic. I've been a math teacher at various points. I, I prefer teaching science, but I do teach math from time to time. So I have some math books, you know, old some calculus books. Uh, uh, I was actually teaching dual credit calculus for a while. Um, 
This guy is interesting. I read his other book. I just bought this one recently, so I have not read this one yet. I'll show you his other book. Why they're not together, I don't know, but as you'll see, organization on these shelves isn't the best. Uh, somebody asked me, you know, why do you have calculus made easy? Um, you know what, I kind of agree. Why are we teaching that in high schools? Aren't there other maths, like statistics, that possibly would be more useful? Uh, here I had some interest in just old textbooks. These aren't particularly books I use. Carl Sagan, Cosmos, of course a science guy has to have that. Uh, Versalog, you know, slide rules. You don't know this, but I actually collect slide rules, so I have a few slide rule books. Uh, I will have to show you my slide rule collection sometime. Yeah, not just a fountain pen guy. Down here, photography. I do a lot of digital photography. You may not know that, but yeah, that's why I have all this fabulous camera equipment. Uh, I haven't read this one yet. David and Goliath by Malcolm Gladwell, but I've read some of his other books, so interesting stuff. Uh, this one I got recommendation, I think this was from David Pakman. Uh, Millionaire Next Door, of course. So Outliers, that's the Malcolm Gladwell that started it all. Intelligence and How to Get It, interesting book. Wrapped, all about paying attention. Iconoclast, about people who are different. Talent is overrated. Yeah, um, why, why are world-class performers better? There's more to it than you think. Uh, you might be wondering, okay, why does he have these police procedural books? Uh, at one time I was writing a book that took place, it was in a police department. It was science fiction, but it was a science fiction -y police department. So I wanted to get procedures right. Um, and I still have visions. There's, there's a book I want to write about a sheriff. Uh, science fiction, so I'll have to change some details, but, you know, good stuff. Clutter's Last Stand, that's a fun one. Uh, I can be prone to cluttering, which is uh, something I always have to watch. Had to buy this in college. It gives a lot about writing, you know, whether you agree or not. Um, let's see. Bad Arguments, that's kind of a cool book of pictures. Uh, another one, not so much pictures. Urban Homestead, that has to do with the gardening thing and the, you know, fixing things and doing things myself. Um, and then I love old physics books. So uh, here are a few. ASAP Science, I subscribe. Oh, look, more decluttering stuff. Um, I don't know if I've read this one, The Canon. I feel like I haven't read that one. That's not ringing a bell for me at all. I have read The Demon Haunted World. I, I should actually do a review of that one. Um, Making Sense of Secondary Science. That was eye-opening. I'd actually like a way to evaluate some of that. Of, you know, what do the kids know or not know? Um, this book is mostly, we use Google now, but, you know, useful. What's this one? I don't even remember. Oh, an st old astronomy book. Like I said, I like some of these old books. And just some more old physics books. I'm wondering where I have... I own a physics book for girls. Yeah, uh, from a... Oh, there it is. I'll, I'll get to it. Which is uh, from a different time. <laughs> Down here, this is a neat illustrated physics book. What they were trying to do with it is clever, clever, clever. Uh, you see people now trying to do this. Uh, let's see if I can find a picture real quick. Yeah, so they... a lot of illustrations of experiments. You know, this is before they could do YouTube clips. I mean, this book is from the... what was it? 1948, I want to say? Analytical Experimental Physics. Copyright 19... oh, can you even read that? 1943. So, yeah. <laughs> Way ahead of its time. Uh, Feynman, of course I have to have him. I feel like there should be a book right here, but I can't think what it is. More Feynman. P this is a great textbook. PSSC Physics. Sadly, it's out of print now. Uh, 
and then physics by inquiry. I took a class with this. Uh, so eye-opening. It was all labs. Uh, but I learned so much just by doing instead of, you know, formulas and notes. thought I understood physics till I used that. Uh, this is not such a great physics book, but it's a good reference and it's a good source of problems. I'm not a fan of the Saxon approach in math or science. Laboratory physics, the teaching of introductory physics. I got a lot there, although that's more geared toward a college level. That's a neat book too. A lot of things show up in this. That, you know, it, this is kind of what got me thinking about s skepticism. Uh, great physics. Oh, you know, I don't think I've read this one either. Now this is a neat book to read. I don't know how you review it, but it's it's basically quantum mechanics in cartoon slash story form. Very clever. Uh, this is my astronomy book from college. I should buy the newer version. Now that I'm teaching uh, eighth grade earth science, get myself up to date. This one seemed like a good idea at the time, but there's an awful lot of it. I'm just thinking, yeah, I'm not doing that with kids. Now there's this one about floating lanterns with fire. I'm just like, no, not in North Dakota. No, 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 no. This one... I thought I would have a more scientifically based space travel in my books, but uh, I found the best thing I can do with that is just sort of hand wave it. And of course, Einstein's Relativity. That has been so long since I've read that. I need to reread it. And then uh, this is actually a very good short book about teaching physics that I need to reread again, get re inspired. Uh, of course, Richard Feynman is always very interesting. And then, I promised, Household Physics. And a little piece of pen sack just rolled across the floor. I have no idea where it came from. I never do pen repairs in this corner of the living room. I have no idea how it got over here. Hmm. Awkward. Anyway, sorry. Uh, this is... Household Physics. This is the physics book for girls. Property of Granville Schools, which would be Granville, North Dakota. Now, before you get, see, before you get too upset and think, oh, Granville, North Dakota, sexist. Look at the copyright, 1919. My grandmother was born that year. Household Physics was written primarily for girls. The principles of physics in such a book are, of course, the same as in a textbook for boys or for mixed classes. But in household physics, these principles are applied to such, in such a way as to interest girls, basing examples and references with which they are thoroughly familiar. So, uh, there's a girl. Oh, look, another girl. Using some high-tech equipment, huh? 1919. But, uh, yeah, look at the applications. An ice cream maker. A refrigerator. I mean, <laughs> yeah, just try and do this now. Uh, it is actually very interesting to look at. And, you know, you, you see this very different culture that existed back then. What's this? Uh, an, an electric ironing machine. An electric cook stove. So, yeah, kind of a, like I said, a very different culture. So, uh, yeah, I, I haunt used bookstores and I look for stuff like this. Uh, I don't get to do that very often anymore just because where I live it's, there aren't any really any used bookstores nearby. But anyway, that's one shelf. Shelf. You get to see a little bit of my mess. That's a new toy that arrived this week. Uh, I had a small 19-inch monitor that I've had for well since before I moved here, so probably 13 or 14 years. 
It was a 19 inch monitor, it wasn't anything amazing, but uh, anyway, dropped my wallet behind this bookshelf, went, uh, pulled the shelf out to get at it, and the didn't hold on to the monitor, it went toppling over. So I lived without it for a month, and now I got this. I hook it to my laptop so I can watch videos, and I have to tell you, this is really nice, because I decided to splurge, I went with a 27 inch monitor, and yeah, <laughs> amazing. So, this is another bookshelf. This bookshelf was actually, I'm showing you this one, even though I'm showing, oops, I'm zooming. This one was made by my grandfather as a gift to me back when I was probably 12. Which, you know, it's nothing amazing, but uh, he made it, and I no longer have him around. And, uh, and I thought, well, give it a place of honor right here in the living room. And uh, apparently a place of mess, too. Alright, so books here. Uh, origami, you know, not super into origami, but it's fun. Uh, Book of Poisons, which can come in handy for writing. There's a hair, oh yeah, Hair in My Dirt. That's a fun book. Magic for Dummies. I, I need to get this out again. I had an, I used to do a couple neat magic tricks, like pull a tie through my neck and stuff like that. Super Stereogram. I remember when I bought this, I was in high school then, they, the, when those stereograms came out, and it was so cool. Uh, chemical Magic, I haven't used it too much. I'm not teaching chemistry anymore, so, yeah. There's another chemistry book I've used as a reference. Definitely not one for high school, though. Um, Complete Peter Rabbit. This is actually Beatrix Potter and a lot more than Peter Rabbit in this book. Uh, old chemistry book that I've gotten a few labs out of. Yeah, really old. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, small houses, I've always, I'm, I've always said if I weren't a teacher, I might have become an architect and designed residential architecture, because I like the idea of small houses. And that's something I buy, you know, Sarah Suzanka's books, uh, the not-so-big house, the whole series. <laughs> I bought them. Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, of course, uh, another book on small houses, another book on small houses, Another book on small houses, and oops, knocked over a book, and stuffed into the middle. That's another one I should uh, do a review on. Of course, it's been a while since I read it. Uh, let's see here. Oh, another book on small houses. Another series is on. Another book on small houses. This is actually kind of a different sort of book, and handmade houses. That was fascinating. Those are cool houses. And then, I don't use aliens in the science fiction I write. They exist, but you never see them. But if I ever get brave, this is a good resource. A book that makes grammar fun. Some gardening books. One of these was, oh, the Vegetable Gardener's Bible. That was a gift from my brother and his wife. Uh, there's a book I haven't read yet. Sketch note. Yeah, I got in sketch notes a little bit. This one, I'm looking where the bookmark is. Oh, yeah, I haven't read that one yet. Another sketch note book. Two, ooh, two notebooks that I forgot were here. I'm just going to peek and see what they are. Not that you care. Oh, okay. Well, now I know. I'll put them back and hopefully remember that they're there. Uh, Fiction, randomly, this isn't the fiction shelf, but there it is. Uh, calculus book, actually taught out of this one. Uh, elements of graphing data, you know, some stuff about presenting information, which is fascinating. A little book that I made a long time ago as a gift for friends and family using my photography. Um, folder full of recipes. <laughs> uh, Edward Tufty, oh, he's interesting. Oops, sorry. Okay, we'll try this again. Edward Tufty, he's very interesting. All about presenting information on the page. This is a neat book. So, I have the Elements of Euclid, an older version of it somewhere. This is a graphical Elements of Euclid. Neat, neat book. Uh, another calculus book. It's two calculus books. Very different approach. They start with integration rather than derivatives, which uh, 
I guess is historical. Here's a book on the Singapore method of teaching math, which they have some clever things. I wish uh, we'd steal those ideas here. A uh, handbook about teaching math in secondary schools. I wanted ideas. Also Singapore math. Another calculus book, also with a very different approach. Um, yeah, I... I own those. <laughs> uh, Alistair MacLean, I... Uh, Good action. I, I don't like his later stuff, but his earlier stuff is pretty good. Um, Stevenson. Clifford Simak, one of the science fiction writers I like. Uh, Rudyard Kipling. John Le Carre. I like him. More Alistair MacLean. High School. Ooh. That's more of a reference book, not a book that I so much read. And then this was given to me as a gift by a viewer to the channel. Kind of a neat little art book. Okay, laundry was leaning up against this bookshelf. I had to move it. So, uh, yeah, there's some novel writing, games. I have friends over. Some books. Let's see. Of these... I'm trying to think if I've read this one. No. Okay, I don't think I've read any of these four here. They're on my list to read. Uh, some cookbooks, not necessarily books to read. More reference. Uh, here's some more. I, th these are ahead of me. Uh, actually, this looks like a lot of books I haven't read. I've read this one, and this is a reference. This is a cookbook. This is... Oh, these are hymnals. Interesting. Uh, Constitution. This was actually recommended to me by my uh, one of my professors in college. It's about uh, nuclear weapons and so on. Uh, the development, I guess you sh I should say. I did a paper on Werner Heisenberg, which uh, I'll get to him. He's on the next shelf down. Uh, this is a interesting book about the last days of uh, the Tsar in Russia, because it was Russia then. And then this is a history of the county where I live. My mother did the artwork on the cover. Down on this shelf, a uh, biology book I used to kind of like. No longer in print, but they have a better book now. A uh, Singapore biology book, of all things. Gray's Anatomy. I have taught anatomy. An old biology book. Mm, me trying to step up my game. Haven't read this, but this is also on my list. I just need time. If I didn't make so many darn videos. Handbook of bio... <laughs> this is from college. Um, I have... I'll show you when I get to the bedroom. I've done some art in the past. I'm not good at it, but I would like to be. So art. Uh, here's old yearbooks. You know, this is a yearbook um, from the spring of the first year I taught here in North Dakota. I was hired in fall of 99. So, yeah. Well, it's not very big, but it wasn't a very big school. So I have yearbooks from every year I taught, except for one, and... Uh, one yearbook is actually laying over on my uh, my uh, coffee table because I was showing it to somebody. So it should be right here. Uh, let's see. Oh, history school where I teach. U.S. Army Survival Manual, a reference book. Um, depending on what I write. Outline of History by H.G. Wells. Interesting perspective there. Uh, one of... I'd swear I have another book about uh, Werner Heisenberg, but I can't find it. Uh, there are people who believe that he may have actually sabotaged Germany's atomic bomb building project. So, uh, I was curious about that, so I was researching it. That's one of the books. So I bought this back in college. The other one, I I don't see it, but I... I yeah. Okay, church I used to belong to. Whew decade ago, decade or, no, more than a decade ago. Civil War Handbook, I've had this since elementary school. 
Uh, I was given this. It's uh, the mother of someone I know just was collecting history of churches around the Fort Berthold Indian Reservation, which I think is pretty cool. Kind of a picture, picture slash history book of small towns in North Dakota. Uh, oh, there's another book I made kind of as a gift. I used to be going around taking pictures of rural schools. Now, why didn't I put a school on the cover? Don't know. But I did uh, well, put some blurbs about them and then stuck in some random photos, too. A lot of this, I was still using film back then. So it was scanned. Hmm. Haven't looked at that in years. Okay, here is a history of Russia. Textbook for a class I took in college is a fun elective. Guns of August. I don't know what happened. Oh, I know what happened to my original copy. I, I, uh, this was also a textbook for a class I took in college about the opening days of the First World War, but I ended up giving it to somebody. Uh, and then I found this at a used bookstore, so I bought it. Another one. Hmm, wonder why I bought that. And then a history of my college. Um, I won't say that this would be the college I would pick now, but it all worked out. You're in my, you're in my bedroom now. Uh, I will just concede that this room is not well lit, so I don't know how well this will work, but this is an additional bookshelf. And, uh, you know, I, I said I'm not much of an artist. I have attempted some art in the past, basically of characters in my books. A lot of these are from one particular book that was kind of a fad at one point in my life, and then I sort of gave up. Which is sad because some of these are decent, so I should have st stuck with it and maybe built up some hope. Uh, used to also enjoy designing buildings for these books. <laughs> I still do that. I'll work out floor plans and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I've got a whole stack of different sorts of artwork I have done. That chair is from my grandparents' basement. Way, 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 way back. Uh, this is an old adding machine. Like I said, I collect slide rules, and I have this puppy also. This is uh, the Barrett. That's funny. I teach a student this year who's named Barrett, but he spells it with just one T. So, books. This is mostly fiction on this bookshelf. Uh, Pilgrim's Progress. I used to be a lot more religious than I am now. Some Arthur C. Clarke. Um, this is kind of interesting about how you can... Change of Culture, Count of Monte Cristo, much better than the movie, Family Mark Twain, I have not read the whole thing, but I've read a lot of it, Day of the Jackal, quite an interesting book if you want to kill, um, oh, what was his name, I'm just drawing a total blank, President of France, anyway, back in the 1960s, there you go, the Quiet American, on my list to read, have not read that yet. I am quite a fan of this author, which is strange, because he's not even that great of a writer. I just really like his books. Uh, Grimm's Fairy Tales, I've read most of that. More Arthur C. Clarke, Dune, Shogun. That's a neat look at uh, Jet Japan, Noble House. And he actually has a whole series of books. These are the ones I own. Uh, of varying quality, to be sure. More Van Vogt. Uh, here we have, I said I like Clifford Simak also, got him. Oxbow Incident, that's quite a good book. Uh, just kind of interesting story of vigilante justice, especially when you consider the time it was made. Um, C.S. Lewis, like I said, I used to be more religious. Uh, Great Gatsby, I had to read this in college and I actually liked it. Uh, Power and the Glory, that's a good book. I read that on a flight home to visit my parents, that's about... Uh, Mexico during a ugly period of history. When worlds collide, that's uh, definitely got some racial supremacy in it. That's uh, kind of creepy and to modern eyes. More Van Vogt. Old books, but uh, yeah, I like old books. 
down on this shelf my Kindle that no longer works and I haven't decided if I want to replace it or not uh, Edgar Allan Poe, Rudyard Kipling this is uh, Jules Verne more Jules Verne, okay it's all Jules Verne uh, Rob Roy, Green Mantle, oh actually this is World War One era type spy fiction, I like John Buchan and he went on to, uh, what did he do in Canada? He become Prime Minister or Governor? I think it was before they were independent? I don't remember. Beowulf? Hard to believe, but I liked that when I read that in high school, so I bought a copy for myself. More John Buchan. Joseph Conrad, he can be kind of dark, but interesting. You know, Secret Agent, that's uh, very dark. Flatland, that's a neat book about geometry. And just dimensions and getting an idea of different dimensions. Watership Down, not depressing, but kind of a neat story. Definitely looks like a children's book because it's about rabbits, but it's really not. Uh, Paul Anderson, I've got a lot of Paul Anderson also. I like him. He's a he, he has the technology, but then he's also not afraid to get primitive, and that's what I like. Isaac Asimov, of course, index cards, lots of Isaac Asimov. Oh, Run Silent, Run Deep, a submarine story. See down another shelf. Let's see. Ministry of Fear. That was kind of neat. That, that, I think that's the one where the guy has amnesia. And it's during the bombing of London. Um, the Human Factor. That's about a spy. The main character is, well, okay, yeah, I'll just tell you. The main character is a spy, and you don't realize that until partway through the book. Honorary, I don't think I've read this one yet. Wind in the Willows, Gogol's Dead Souls, I've read that a few times. That's uh, a Russian book. He died before he finished it. It was meant to be sort of making fun of Russian culture. Uh, more writings that are complete. One about a nose escaping. <laughs> Lord of the Flies. Frederick Forsyth. Um, I, I, I told you I liked uh, The Day of the Jackal. This is just some of his other work. Advise and Consent. Good book and uh, good movie. All about confirming, was it a Secretary of State, I think? Crime and Punishment. have not read that yet. Brothers Karamasov, I cannot remember what that's about. Nerves, I read that in elementary school, and that was about a nuclear power plant. Some of the science is a little iffy, but an interesting book nonetheless. Red Badge of Courage, we had to read that when I was in fifth grade. Civil War book. This is just some space travel. King Rat, good book and good movie about a Japanese POW camp. Um... Well, they're not shelved for some reason. Taking a Pelham 123. There was a remake recently, which I have not seen. Uh, the old 1970s movie was pretty good. Uh, book is, is pretty good. It's you know, about taking a subway hostage. Frederick Forsyth, The Kill List. Boy, I'm drawing a blank on that one. Whoops, sorry. Hmm, I can't tell if I've read that or not. Uh, and John Le more John Le Carre, uh, Arthur C. Clarke, 2010, more Arthur C. Clarke, more Arthur C. Clarke, Don Quixote, in English, of course. Papillon, he was a, pris a French prisoner in, uh, what was the country? Well, it was a colony then, but anyway, he tried several times to escape and eventually succeeded. And it's basically about how horrible the prison was. Um, he claims he is falsely imprisoned. Who knows? And there was a movie about it starring... Um, what is his name? Steve McQueen? Is that Dustin Hoffman? I can't remember who the other guy is. Uh, Alice in Wonderland. More John Buchan. More John Buchan. Ray Bradbury, of course. Down another le level. 
This is kind of cool. This is a memoir of a guy who worked for Soviet Secret Service. And how he became what he was. Scarlet Letter, for some reason I liked that in high school, so I bought a copy. Now we've got a lot of Robert Heinlein. Uh, more Frank Herbert, you know, Dune and so on. Goodbye Mr. Chips, I had to buy that one. Uh, I'm a teacher. So, you know, that's a classic teachery book. Inherit the Stars. Uh, oh, I read that one last summer. That the Discovery space, this guy, the guy in a spacesuit on the moon that is way too old. Like thousands of years old. And it's a whole story about solving that mystery. And then Fred Hoyle, actually, uh, this is... is Quite an interesting author and works a lot of science into it. Uh, I guess he had some other quirks too, which uh, if I ever review one of his books I'll have to get into. Brave New World and Brave New World Revisited. Oh, some nudity. Uh, the Trial, that's a Kafka, of course, that's odd stuff. Um, I actually saw the movie first and I was just like, what? <laughs> Didn't like it the first time I watched it. Uh, Flowers for Algernon, that's about uh, a guy whose intelligence is artificially enhanced and then he loses it. More John le Carre. Uh, ooh, read this in elementary school, had to have a copy, Wrinkle in Time. Boys from Brazil, awesome, very interesting concept, that's where they've cloned Hitler. And actually the movie got a lot of the science about cloning pretty close to right. Um, C.S. Lewis, his uh, space trilogy. I mean, it's sort of Christian-y, but it's interesting. Breakheart Pass. I know what it's about, but it's been so long since I read it. It's I, I, yeah, it didn't leave much impact on me. Oh, here's a good one. HMS Ulysses. That's about a ship. Um, what I kind of liked was, you know, well, it's about a ship in the, I won't give it away, but it's a ship in the Atlantic during the Second World War. Uh, one of the versions of King Arthur's story. This was, uh, well, if you, it, it's some Cold War history that I found interesting. We'll just leave it at that. Larry Niven. I feel like I should have more Larry Niven books, so I don't know what happened to them. He's interesting. He's leans more toward hard science fiction. Not always the best writing, but pretty good. Uh, 1984, of course. I read that first time in elementary school. If you can imagine. I was a weird little kid. Animal Farm. Which isn't really a children's story. Let's see, down here. Oh yeah, of course, I'm fascinated by the First World War, so I had to own this book. And then uh, I've thought about doing terraforming, and I'm leaning against it now in my books, but uh, for a long time I wanted to have terraforming in my books. So uh, this is a whole series about terraforming Mars. And interesting, uh, Ivanhoe, that's a classic. On the Beach, Neville Shoot, that's a good book. Uh, depressing. More Clifford Simak, of varying quality. I mean, some of it's very good. I mean, Way Station is a classic. This one isn't a classic. It's not that well known, but it's about uh, freezing people. And it's actually kind of depressing. But yeah, and then you've got City, that's a, that's a classic also. Uh, and then you have some of his silliness. Uh, this guy, I picked this book up kind of by accident because I saw, I wasn't looking closely, I just, oh, I like Cl Clifford Simak, uh, no, Kurt Simak. If I remember right, this is about a brain. Yeah, it's a brain this guy recovers and it starts controlling him somehow. Keeps it in a jar. Uh, Norman Spinran, this is the only one of, of his that I've read, but it's actually... Kind of the science fiction version of Count of Monte Cristo. And then down here I have Grapes of Wrath. 
east of Eden. Kind of. Oh, I actually know somebody. That is her, her last name. And she's an English teacher. Huh. I might have to investigate that. Maybe that's from a relative of hers. It's not like a common name. More another version of King Arthur. Uh, the Hobbit, you know, Lord of the Rings set. Silmarillion. Somebody asked if I'd ever read that. Yep. More Van Vogt. And I'm going to have to lay on the floor for this last one. So I'm going to shut this off so you don't get seasick. This is dark. I apologize. But we've got a lot more Van Vogt. And more. This is a neat one of his. It's uh, actually, you know, I don't care for some of the things in it, but it's about uh, a attempt by the Chinese to do some brainwashing. Not really science fiction at all. But it has to do with personalities and stuff, which, uh, well, for better or for worse. More Van Vogt, more Van Vogt, more Van Vogt, and... Languages of Pow by, is that Jack Vance? I can't tell. Yeah, there it is. That's about uh, a culture take, is taken over and the people that take it over actually force uh, languages on the people that are supposed to control how they think. Neat concept. I'm not sure how well it would work out in reality. Jules Verne. Read all those. Oh, here's a good book. In fact, this was recently remade. I haven't seen the remake, but I've seen the 1940s version. All the King's Men, it's about, loosely, uh, about a Mississippi governor, yeah, Mississippi or Louisiana, anyway, a southern governor who kind of built a cult of personality. Uh, does it say in the back? No. Anyway, it's about his rise and fall. And then we have H.G. Wells. This was a book I'd never heard of before. I haven't read that one in a long time, but I know it's about war. Nuclear war, I think. I'll have to reread that one again, too. I'm drawing a blank. Let's see, this one's Falling Apart. Oh, Short Stories by H.G. Wells. Um, more short stories. Time Machine. Oh, Once and Future King, I think. That is another King Arthur book. And then this is a Nazi death camp book, which is really hard reading. And then When Worlds Collide in a paperback form. So now I'm laying on the floor doing this, and i got to get up and show you my, yeah, one more bookshelf. So this is kind of a mess. <laughs> uh, let's see, I want to get into this Robert Jordan. I just haven't yet. The Eye of the World, uh, Paul Anderson, Isaac Asimov, Isaac Asimov, Ray Bradbury, Last Days of Pompeii, here's The Adventures of Richard Haney, that's that John Buchan again, in fact, three books of his, To Kill a Mockingbird, quite a good book, I read that in school and liked it, A uh, Spy Who Came In from the Cold, uh, good movie and a pretty good book, Sand Pebbles, that is about... Um, like a riverboat, American riverboat in China. Oh, it's been a long time. I'm trying to remember why they're there right now. But anyway, it takes place during the Communist Revolution in China. Uh, it later on became a movie... I'm trying to remember who was in it. Richard McKenna was in it. I can't remember who else. Somebody big name. A few big names, actually. You can see their faces. Oh, Steve McQueen was in it. Ah, don't remember. Reading and writing Chinese, you're about to see a bit of that. Some more art, buried under some dust. More art. This is actually some notebooks. One of these might be a notebook I've been looking for. So I will have to search through that later. Um, these books, these are directories from college. Mostly I kept them because they have pictures of the people I knew. Uh, yearbooks from my school days, before I was a teacher. Yeah, that's all that's there. Weird random fountain pen stuff. Now i got to see how I'm going to do this in this tight space. 
I'm working on learning Chinese, so here's a bunch of Chinese books. I was able to get this whole set as a series, but I've actually been using an online course more once I got this set. So, uh, yeah, may have been a waste of money, but it'll be, it's a good reference for grammar. Uh, Art of War in Chinese and English. Some more Chinese books, just a whole bunch of Chinese books. All right. And the bottom shelf, which is going to be really badly lit. And I can't lay on the floor for this one because there's not enough room here. Uh, oops, I see a cobweb too. Let me pull that out so you don't see it. <laughs> okay. Now on this shelf, you cannot... It is too, 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 too dark. I think, yes. It is. Okay, so I will pull a few books out, just give you an idea. Canticle for Leibwitz, that is a really interesting novel about nuclear war, more about the aftermath. He wrote a sequel much later in life, which was not nearly as good. Larry Niven, that's one of the books I knew I had, I just couldn't find it, because it's in hardcover, not paperback. Jack London, mostly short stories there. More H.G. Wells, this is a book I bought in... I think I was still in elementary school when I bought this. Dr. You can't read that. Dr. Zhivago. Uh, kind of a love story. A little bit depressing. About, and it takes place during the communist revolution in Russia. A lot of Robert Louis Stevenson. I've read, I haven't read this straight through, but I've read a lot of the stories and writings in it. Uh, upside Down. Coil. Rules for games, basically. Uh, let's see, what's this blue book? I don't remember. Oh, oh uh, just a cool reference book that I bought from uh, 1907. I've got a couple dust bunnies wandering around here. I don't like that. Go away, guys. <laughs> So, yeah, that's a neat book to look through. Not much of current use in it, but interesting. Same thing, I've got the home... Oh, let's bring it out to the light here. The home physician. Third edition. Copyrights. Uh, the latest one here is 1940. Those whom the gods love die young, said the ancients. <laughs> well, that's depressing. More H.G. Wells. Kind of interesting, actually. That, that, that's a collection of his works. Um, I forget what all is in it. I didn't write that. I'm going to blame Russ Nordwin. Oh, here we go. So, yeah, some of his classic books. War of the Worlds, First Men in the Moon, When the Sleeper Wakes, and then some short stories. Uh, Country of the Blind is an mm, interesting way to look at things, let's just say. So, oh, The Land Iron Ironclads, about tank warfare, and basically about how manly soldiers aren't needed because the guys running the tanks are little nerdy guys in pajamas, basically. The Cane Mutiny, that is, uh, basically, the, the, the ship, I want to say it's a destroyer, but I can't remember, gets a not-so-great captain, and they end up, the officers of the ship end up, uh, forcibly removing him from office, and then there's a whole trial. I, I forget what all happens in it. There, it was, this is also a book. It had, um, oh, let's see. Humphrey Bogart played the captain. Several other big names, too, but I can't remember who they were. Good book, good movie. Das Boot. Except here it says The Boat. Uh, the movie is called Das Boot. This is about a U-boat in the Second World War, from the German perspective. And uh, also a very accurate, very well-made German movie. 
Farewell to Arms, that I think is First World War, uh, Ernest Hemingway. I haven't read that in a long time. I need to reread that. You can tell it's been a while since I've read it. Look at the dust. I need to vacuum off the tops of these books, I think. Uh, let's see, what's this one? Captain's Courageous? Oh, that's a Rudyard Kipling. That's kind of a coming-of-age story. This rich, spoiled rich kid get, gets dumped. That, look, that looks like a satellite dish. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, anyway, this r spoiled rich kid ends up getting dumped overboard of his ship, and he's rescued by uh, um, a fisherman, and ends up, you know, he grows up a lot working for this fisherman until his family can get him, because, of course, it's back at a time when that was not done quickly. And then this is Kim. This was a fascinating, fascinating book. Uh, India. And it's about a kid named Kim who grows up on the streets in India and uh, eventually becomes a spy. And uh, it just, this is one of those books where I really felt like I got a flavor for an exotic country. In fact, Rudyard Kipling can do that. I've read several of his books that really give me a flavor of another country and another culture and just really make me feel like I'm somewhere new. So, anyway, that's a look around my book collection. Uh, I hope that was interesting. Uh, I know it's not a pen review, but got to do something different once in a while. Uh, and believe it or not, that is not the extent of my books. Uh, they, they are floating around the house and uh, stuffed into random places. I, I have a sickness. Um, <laughs> one of these days I'll have to show you my, my uh, slide rules and some of the other stuff I do. So anyway, I thank you for watching and for putting up with that. Hope it was at least mildly interesting. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.